You got, you got, speaking of turbulent by the fucking minute, let's uh, get into this movie. Oh um, my god, welcome. <laughs> hello and welcome back to the Real Horror Show podcast. I'm your host, Samantha. And I'm Stormy. What up, Stormy's guys? Hi. Hello. Um, hello. It's a interesting day we're recording like four hours later than we usually do because someone got a new job and someone's being nice and helping at another church filling in their admin for their admin duties i see okay cool so we're both kind of like working a little bit more yeah and i don't know talking with one of the guys yeah. who attends the church i'm helping at today he's on the fence about even hiring a new admin person because they're very much on the verge of possibly having to close the church down because they just don't have the membership anymore wow and it's still like I'm not super religious or anything if at all but stuff like that bums me out because you know churches are communities and people find comfort in them and in the case of the guy I was talking to earlier who was a sweetheart he's been attending this church for 37 years (laughs) yeah so wow that's a long time and it also bumps me out on like the political side where the church that I work at full-time and this one are very left-leaning progressive churches Mm -hmm. Uh, we co-sponsor a drag brunch with our campus ministry and the Lutheran church where I'm helping assist with assist with that as well and they have a really cool female I think she might be queer identifying I haven't asked but she has like those vibes. Yeah. Um, They're her new, she's leading them. So it bums me out that these left-leaning progressive churches are the ones struggling to keep up membership, trying to stay thriving while the fucking evangelicals are doing just fine. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's, (laughs) that's the real horror show is the evangelicals. But you know, there's also brainstorming for what they could do to try and keep that building um, from having to completely shut it down and use the building for other purposes. Both she and my new boss seem like super open to the idea of starting a local community theater in Radford. She's met people who, she told me that there'd be a lot of interest because that's been my goal. I just don't have the money to do it. Yeah, right, right, right. It's to start a community theater in Radford. Yeah, that is so cool. But we'll see. You gotta go for it, Sam. I was also thinking, you know, there's a lot of need for, from homeless women in the area. We could work with the Women's Resource Center and convert it into a few dozen rooms. Yeah. Because there's a kitchen there. Yeah. And so it would be great space for that too. But selfishly, I'd like to start a community theater. (laughs) Yeah, it's our priority. Oh, well, both sound incredible. So I really hope that you uh, get the, you know, uh, just... I hope other people want to do it too. So you're able to kind of like yeah. try it. And you started your new job? I did. I started my new job. This job, this uh, week was the first week of my new job. So now I can actually talk about it because it is legit. Um, but I'm the new web, I guess you could say I'm the webmaster because mm-hmm. that's what they used to be called. <laughs> but I'm the web manager of the community college that I work at. Um, and so that's really cool. I'm in charge of the entire website. Along are, you, with other, yeah. are you still going to be teaching at all or so as of right now because I'm starting uh more schooling um in the fall for myself I will not be teaching uh for like the foreseeable future wait you didn't tell me you were starting new schooling I didn't say I'm, I'm starting a PhD program in the fall did I not tell you that you may have No, I don't think you would have. I would have remembered that. I'm a good friend. (laughs) Well, I'm not because I like, I I keep so much to myself and then I maybe tell one person that I forget which person it was. (laughs) Finally. Yeah, dude. So, um, I, I swear to fucking God, I told you though, but I, because I decided in like May and maybe I was telling you I was looking again, Mm -hmm. but you may have told me you were looking. Okay. Well, I, like applied for a program and it begins this fall so I'll be doing that and the new job and so I won't be teaching for right now and I won't be working with the campus magazine um but I will be the advisor for uh the writers club still just because that club like runs itself it's a student-run organization Mm -hmm. so it's easy 
Um, and that's what I'll be doing. So for the next at least three years, I won't be teaching um, because I'll be trying to finish school myself. But once I do finish, then I can like reevaluate if I have time, if I even want to, you know, stuff like that. So. Yeah, that's so exciting. What's the, where's your program? What's yeah. it out of? Cool. So it's an online um, program out of, uh, I shudder to say this, but Liberty University in Lynch, uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. What? Yeah, they have a ton of online PhD programs. I was shocked. Bro. But, uh, yeah. Bro, yeah. we're going to riddle ridicule you at the batch party oh man is it because like I'm not from Virginia but I like know <laughs> I know about LU but I don't know it like as a local mm-hmm. but anyway they were the only online uh fully online PhD for higher education administration and leadership yeah so I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I know people who've gone to Liberty for their master's, I'm sure. So Liberty really fucking sucks. (laughs) Yeah, tell me about it. Um, Because they are a religious university and I feel like you have more rules there than if you were to just fucking live at home in in college. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh God, yeah. But you're, you're safe. You're in Pennsylvania. You're a PhD student, so they can't like do too much to you. Yeah, the only thing that was like a con that put me off was um, that you have to just, uh, you have to like use the Bible as like a, <laughs> like a source, like source yeah. material for stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? I don't even have that. So like, I have to like get a Bible and like write a research paper and like <laughs> apply concepts from the Bible to the higher education. Like what the so I don't know I'm just looking at it from a very objective standpoint and seeing if I can challenge myself creatively and see if I can squeeze out any type of stuff from the bible Mm -hmm. put a spin on it and then apply it in a certain way so it still makes sense I don't know so I'm actually kind of looking at it in a fun way that's silly and not serious yeah that's (laughs) the bible that's so crazy you're gonna have to keep me updated on what you have to do I can't wait to tell you about it man (laughs) so I had a friend from high school who went to Liberty for undergrad okay and he in high school he was never openly homophobic in fact we suspect he is either bi or gay Mm -hmm. Um, because whenever we would like discuss sexuality and stuff, he would always say things like, well, I don't think anyone's ever a hundred percent straight. Yes, of course. (laughs) And it's like, hmm. As you would. Yeah. We hear you, we hear you and we see you and we love you very much. And while he was attending Liberty, I was Mm -hmm. reading one of his blog posts and he got cast in a community theater production of Legally Blonde, the musical. Nice. As the, um, the guy the gay man yes oh okay cool as as the gay man uh gay or european and he apparently had like a huge like crisis of faith over this and he was like oh. i was talking to my friend and she said even if i'm playing a character it's still a sin and message redacted i'm gonna have to censor his name yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> um the guy i knew in high school would have never had this crisis of faith over it. Like he yeah. would have loved playing the role regardless. Cause that's a super fun role to play. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm sure that won't happen to you. Yeah, no, no. I'm, t- I'm far too old to be uh, brainwashed at this point in my life. Yeah. You're too old and too far removed since it is an online course. I know. I feel like I'll, <laughs> I feel like uh, since it is an online PhD, I'll like barely speak to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> ever I'll never hear a voice I'll just see type like typed text and that's it yeah which is fine by me I work better I'm quite an independent worker so that works for me pretty good yes um but um <laughs> expect to be uh ridiculed oh, at the batch party <laughs> excellent yes please do it's so it's so silly I know there's so many weird little things that could easily be used as like fodder for ridicule for me personally like my diet and like my personal (laughs) life choices like I'm a vegetarian everybody (laughs) um I I eat fish though so that and and also dairy and stuff like that so it's it's a little confusing of a diet so you're a piscatarian you're not a vegetarian 
yeah i'm like a pesca pescatarian or whatever the hell yeah exactly but yeah i eat the fish so uh i do that i don't drink or do anything like that um and that can also be you know kind of silly and funny i'm sure we won't pick on you for that we need you (laughs) oh you don't do cocaine loser like no but um no it's it's great that you don't drink because uh the other bridesmaid she can have one drink otherwise um her blood gets too thin and she could die whoa really she uh she had a blood clot last year so she's she's on blood thinners holy hell yeah i was gonna ask if she's the one that had a blood clot jesus christ yeah she okay yeah why did she get a blood clot uh her birth control what oh my god that's another real horror show thing that we could yeah. talk about another time. But anyway, yeah. guys, uh, watch out out there, okay? Yeah. Jesus, the Wild speaking, West. Speaking of watching out out there. <laughs> yeah, anyway, wow, let's really get into it. If you thought that was all depressing, <laughs> Jesus, um, Lord, just wait. <laughs> this week, we're talking about The Mist, also known as Stephen King's The Mist, which is a 20, 2000 seven american science science fiction horror film based on the 1980 novella the mist by stephen king the film was written and directed by frank darabont um he'd been interested in making the mist since the 1980s mm-hmm. and the film includes an ensemble cast yep it's like the walking dead cast <laughs> yeah. i think like, um and another note from this little Wikipedia blurb, the director revised the ending of the film to be darker than the novella's ending, a change to which King was amend- amendable. Does that mean like, he was happy or sad? Oh, he, Stephen King loves this ending. He's gone on record to say he oh, really? wishes he wrote it. Oh, so you're saying that when I read the novella, it's not going to be like that. Yeah, so the novella, I um, haven't read it either, but the novella that? ends the way a lot of these types of stories do like will smith's um uh, i am legend oh i'm legend and like uh the walking dead where it's post-apocalyptic everyone's dying but there's a radio signal and i think i know where we can go for safety Uh, okay and that's essentially how the novella ends gotcha so a fairly like generic ending for this type of story a much more optimistic ending yeah but as we (laughs) As we get into it, um, you know, this came out in 2007, so right at the hot, uh, the bleh, right at the <laughs> height of uh, post 9/11 horror. Yes, and we all know horror so reflects good. the way society is feeling in that time, uh, which is why you know right now we're seeing a huge horror resurgence. You know, not that they're making more horror films, but horror films have gained popularity again because all the shit we've been going through, we want to. F- Mm-hmm. We want to feel trauma in a contained environment. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what the whole torture porn um, emergence of the post 9-11 <laughs> world came from. And David wasn't a huge fan of this movie. He watched it with me and didn't like the ending. And I was like, well, does the ending make more sense if I say it's a post 9-11 horror movie? Yes, and he said he said it does, but he he doesn't like the ending. He thought it was predictable, but it oh, might, I didn't see that coming at all. Right, and <laughs> it might be predictable by today's standards, but like in two thousand seven, fucking killing a kid point blank in that. Jesus, head. yeah. Spoilers, guys. Yeah. So like seriously, like big spoilers, especially since the ending is way is like different than the novella. I guess I don't yeah. have to read it anymore because I wanted to read it to see how fucked up it would be, but I guess it's not as bad. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. But like I'm sure that was super shocking for 2007 because oh my God. you know, the father always survives with his son, right? Except, you know, in um animal pet a pet cemetery. Yeah. But I yeah. guess in pet cemetery. I guess in Pet Cemetery they all end up dying, right? So kind of. I still haven't seen Pet Cemetery. I can't believe that I like keep putting stuff off so long. I'm finally. I'm glad we. I finally watched this. The Mist, not to be confused with The Fog, but it's mm-hmm. The Mist. Um, 
but yeah dude latter like the later 2000s horror movies are like I feel like the whole 2000s like they're great fantastic they're all mm-hmm. like crazy and insane but also really really good uh, they just don't make them like then so you're right yeah. yeah this movie does have kind of a main character in um what's his face I guess the dad the dad uh David Drayton yeah David played by Thomas Jane oh is that who that is because I just kept calling him the guy that wants to look and be James Purefoy, who is a British actor that looks exactly like him. That his name is Thomas James. Um, and so, I mean, the standout performance for me, I'm just going to say it was um, Andre Keith Brower from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. He plays Captain Holt on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, him as Mr. Norton. He's always phenomenal in every role he plays. Um, but I will say this is this movie came out in 2007 and even though it was based on a 1980s novella yeah very much like the finger pointing and anger at each other and infighting very like post 9-11 mindset oh yeah definitely because we always we always like reflect on that time like I would never want another 9-11 but remember how connected we were after it happened we that would never happen again even though it absolutely should have because uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic we were having little 9-11s every single fucking day with how many Mm. people were dying anyway (laughs) anyway uh, (laughs) sorry that got dark um so not as dark as the ending of this movie (laughs) right um so um Captain Holt is the only black character in this movie and I think had it come out a little later maybe like 2010 even mm-hmm. he would have been played by a middle eastern actor oh yeah maybe because that was that was definitely there in the novella he's white oh, okay but I think having him played by a black actor really like drills in this whole you're a fucking outsider. Right, right. Yeah, I guess he's the only black man. You're right. I'm looking at the cast now. Yeah. And adds a whole other layer of tension to all the infighting that's happening in the store until he and his group end up leaving. Mm-hmm. Um, I noticed that like I have no idea if I don't know if I missed it, but like, do we know if he even lived or died? So in both the novella and the movie, it's left vague. You can probably gauge that he may have died because the biker that leaves with them, they just pull back half a body. Uh-huh. Yeah, but that was the, yeah, the biker, the motorcycle guy. So I guess maybe he could have died too. Um, apparently, I can't find it anywhere online, so it may not have even made it to the DVD release. It may have just been in like the screenplay or something allegedly that final scene after you know what happens in the car happens in the car and the military comes through and the mist begins clearing you see the woman the mother who left right away saying I need to get to my kids and she left the store you see her being rescued in the military convoy a pair allegedly there's a deleted scene where Mr. Norton was also in that convoy oh got it which I think would have been maybe a more powerful moment Mm -hmm. because I forgot about that woman, you know? (laughs) Yeah. She has such a small role and you're supposed to remember her. Dude, she's in The Walking Dead too. Ooh. She's the one lady with short hair. Like, I always remember her because no matter how many years the zombie apocalypse goes on, her hair never grows longer. It only gets shorter, I feel like crazy how that happens same thing happens with body hair (laughs) yeah oh yeah there's a show I'm watching where like it's a it's post-apocalyptic and all the women have no leg hair but armpit hair so I'm just like oh well you shave the legs do (laughs) you um oh and we would be idiots not to talk about Marissa Gay Harden as um the crazy religious nut yeah she was phenomenal she did win a she's a star yeah, she won a Saturn Award for this. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
because she was phenomenal. I know. I love when I see her and stuff. I'm like, yes. When people talk about this movie, it's always her performance that they rave about and rightly so. Yeah. She carried this movie. She did. At every time she was on screen, I, I couldn't look away. So like who gives a shit about what's in the mist when she's in the store? Yeah. And you know what? Did we talk about plot enough to just talk about the mist and what's inside the mist? Absolutely, because sweet. Um <laughs> hot take. Yeah. This movie's strengths are with its ensemble cast and the shit that's going on in the store, that whole Lord of the Flies type shit. Yeah. It's weakest when we actually see what's in the mist because the effects have not aged well at all. Yeah. And like the first time I watched this, I don't remember them being that bad, but watching it this past weekend, they were bad. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, they were bad. You were right. (laughs) So I think the strength of this movie is definitely with the ensemble cast in the store and not so much the monsters in the mist and that makes sense because frank darabont the Mm -hmm. writer and director of this movie he wanted to do this movie for so long but do you know what his directorial debut ended up being what the shawshank redemption really yeah wow and then he went on to direct the green mile wow and then he did this yeah he did a few things in between but this was like his passion project And Mm -hmm. knowing that he did those two Stephen King adaptations, which The Shawshank Redemption is one of the greatest movies of all time. Like it is so good. Like his directorial debut had seven Oscar nominations. That's fucking impressive. It is. So it makes sense why the strength of this movie is on the ensemble cast and the emotions going on in the Mm -hmm. store rather than the actual monsters in the mist. Right. Yes. Um, but I need to talk about just that, the monsters in the mist, because it's like, let the, the detail slips in the movie that the mist is like a government project weapon thing that goes wrong. Is that, do I have that right? Yes, that is what it is. And I got curious because I don't know how much you follow or are aware of the Stephen King literary universe where all of his books are connected and you can learn about how they're connected by reading the Dark Tower series. Oh, I have not read that. So I feel like I'm on like the outer rim of yeah. his like universe. Yeah. So I looked it up on the Stephen King wiki and it's never <laughs> been confirmed, but Um, It's speculated among fans of the Dark Tower series that what the military was doing created a thinning, which in the Dark Tower series is a rip between universes. Oh, so that's why the monsters. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the monsters. And um, (laughs) you can, there's a nod to the Dark Dark Tower series at the very beginning of this movie. Oh, um, about the the uh, tornado thing? Yeah, the actor is painting one of the Dark Tower covers. Oh, I thought he was painting. I guess that makes sense because it looks very similar to the cover of um, the movie uh, Fistful of Dollars. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have to look it up. Yeah. But is that true? It's it's definitely the Dark Tower, though. Yeah, it's the Dark Tower. It's supposed to be another. It's supposed to be a Stephen King nod. But... The Dark Tower is the series that connects or explains everything in like all the other Stephen King novels. Like I guess um, the big one is It. It explains what It is. Just from another universe? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like a a spider. It's a spoiler alert, guys, if you haven't read It. Oh my God. (laughs) It's like a giant spider. But yes, um, it is a government experiment gone awry. That, yeah, that makes more sense because as I was watching, we get, we get that detail that it's like a government experience, experiment military weapon thing. And I was like, well, why would the military make a mist with like scary monsters in it? Like, what's that kind of thing? <laughs> but like, it makes sense that it's like a rip in, in our reality. Because I was like, oh, they really, it's really scary to the enemy with like the giant eldritch terrors. <laughs> but uh, 
not quite the case. So I was wrong, but I had to ask a question. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good question. Um, so the okay. plot, of, yeah. so the plot of this movie, there's a like electrical storm. In the novel, it's an electrical storm. In this, mm-hmm. it's just like a fucking major thunderstorm, derecho, tornado, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Um, blows in, blows a tree through their window, ruins everything. And the next morning, they're cleaning up and it truly see, ruins everything. <laughs> and sees, and they see this mist rolling across the lake. And they're like, oh, it's just, it's fog coming in from the storm. I'm going to go to the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because the power's out. So they say they have to throw everything out of their fridge. Yeah. So naturally, since your fridge is still, I, I, if their power's back on, that makes sense. But if the power's not on, no, the power's not on, Sam. So why go to the store and get more food? I guess you get dry goods in the fucking store with the power's out. Like, I'm going to refill my fridge. That's off. Yeah. <laughs> and um the mother the wife mrs drayton says oh no i won't go with you guys you you all go by yourselves oh god which yeah. i don't know if i saw that mysterious mist rolling in i am a paranoid person i probably yeah. would have gone i would have gone too because she didn't she stay home to like dick around and like try to fix something like a door or something yeah she window. wanted to <laughs> she wanted to start cleaning up but like that could wait. Oh, cool, chill. Yeah, that can wait. Go to the store because what if your husband like, gets all the wrong things? Yeah. <laughs> Never know. And you know, she ends up regretting it because <laughs> she's pro- fucking dead. <laughs> she's probably the first one to die. Dude, probably because it like hits her house straight on and everybody else has gone to the store. Mm-hmm. Oh God. That's really sad that when we do see her dead back at his house after two hours, I didn't know the movie was that long, but geez, guys. Yeah, I, I didn't realize it was a two-hour movie because it just kind of flies by. It does, but then I was like, hmm, this, I was like, wow, I've been watching this movie. <laughs> yeah, two hours. It's good, though. It's good. It was very good. Um, so they're all at the store when an old man comes running into the store as the mist is kind of chasing him. Yeah. And soon it's, the whole store is engulfed in it everybody's safe inside and they're like he's like no don't go out in the mist there's something in the mist Mm -hmm. and they're all like okay so I guess we'll chill here for a bit and see if it goes away and one woman's like well if there's monsters in the mist I need to get out there and go to my children and nobody agrees to go with her uh which I I don't blame any of them especially when she looks at a draper who's like i have my i have my own kid to watch and it's like yeah he's he's not gonna leave his kid to go help you be with yours and she's like fuck all y'all and she leaves Mm -hmm. how she survives yeah she does survive we find that out yeah which i want to know how she fucking survived yeah how the fuck did she everyone else died she's probably in on it she's one of the monsters (laughs) yeah she definitely is okay yeah but they're at the store most of the movie is at the store yeah trying to think of so uh, hijinks ensue in the store um draper goes down to the loading dock for some reason and something's pushing against the door he tells everyone a group of them go downstairs which leads to the bag boy getting killed by a tentacle monster oh god and so they go back up there and they are like, they're like, okay, so we got to try and explain this. And they do. And Mr. Norton's like, you guys are fucking with me. You guys have never liked me uh, because I'm an outsider. And like we said earlier, it has a whole new layer to have him played by a black man right. in a small, um, probably Maine. I'm guessing this is Maine. It's Stephen Definitely King. Maine. It's Maine. <laughs> it's always Maine. <laughs> so a few weeks like last year, sometimes Stephen King tweeted out something disparaging about Roanoke, uh, which is 40 minutes from where I live. And it's a nice little city. It's a, yeah. it's a nice little city. Mm-hmm. And he said something like, uh, good news, you're going to Roanoke. Bad news, you're going to Roanoke. And I wanted to tweet back, bitch, you live, you, you're fucking obsessed with Maine. <laughs> <laughs> you're obsessed with Bangor, Maine, and not just Maine, but like just the city he grew up in. It's like, yeah. dude, like, <laughs> he's you like the you, guy's. <laughs> You can't talk shit about any other city when you're obsessed with your hometown. Yeah. In he's, Maine. He's the guy that never left his hometown, like the original guy, because he constantly, he like won't let that shit go. No. Oh my God, dude. Anyway. anyway what, um, what's, he, what's there, Stephen? What's there in Maine and Bangor? Like nothing is there. <laughs> Just you and your house. 
Yeah, that's the only reason people visit Bangor, Maine, is to go see Stephen King's house. That's yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> um. So after the kerfuffle, they um they're like, all right, we're here for the night because the mist isn't going away and a kid is dead now because of it. So they decide to grill up some chicken, but Norton's like, no, we need to we need to get out of here. So a group of them leave and a biker agrees to tie a rope around his waist and go get a shotgun from someone's car. However, yes. there, at least he is attacked. We never get confirmation of what happens to Norton. So yes. at least he's attacked and then they pull on the string and we see <laughs> his legs. Yes. <laughs> which is probably my favorite gore moment from this movie. Yes. Since it was practical practical effects that aged pretty well versus the CGI, which has not aged. Yeah, like the, te- the tentacles and things. Yeah. No, that that was borderline made for TV. Straight up, I know. <laughs> made for TV. Um, wait, but let me pause you there because I have a quick question about the, the these moments that led up to him dying. So whenever um uh the I I guess he's like a lawyer. Um, mm-hmm. the man he um Brent Norton so he was like mad at David Drayton because and he said that he filed a lawsuit against him because David assaulted him yeah Do you again have any more info on that um I don't think we're ever given any more information on that is David just like a fucking maniac just like beats on honestly people? <laughs> probably because they got annoyed like the only reason he talked to Norton at the beginning of the movie and why they agreed to go to town together was because he was going to go bitch at him yeah. because a tree that Norton was supposed to cut down fell on their boathouse. Right. And it's like, I mean, he didn't like make the storm come. Exactly. He was probably like getting to it. <laughs> yeah. And the storm fucking happened. So blame the military for fucking shit up yeah. because the trees falling on everyone's important homes and buildings and cars ruined everything. <laughs> These yeah. trees. But Damn. all of that, like, it, it, it just, it adds a whole nother layer with it being a black man being singled yeah. out by the entire white town of Maine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of Maine. <laughs> yep. At the store. So he, they leave and we never see Norton in that group again. And occasionally uh, David's son will run up and remind you that he exists. Yes, yes. And he's always like crying and stuff. Yeah. And I don't think it's long after that that we get to the next big plot point, which is the giant bugs on the window. Oh, yeah. The giant bugs coming from the mist. They break through the window get in the store and there's a huge fight some guy accidentally sets himself on fire the pretty bad girl gets stung in the throat and dies yeah she's really pretty oh my god can we talk about her boyfriend who looks like a freak though (laughs) did you notice him i noticed why does he look like that i noticed he looked really familiar but it could just be because he looks like every other 18 year old army recruit in the world (laughs) he looked like I don't know what is with his face in this movie, but he looked very scary. But he, he's like, uh, it looks like he does a lot of voice acting for Star Wars. And he's in Riverdale. Maybe that's why you you recognize him. He's probably Riverdale. in one episode of The Vampire Diaries or some shit. Probably. Oh my <laughs> gosh, but he just looks like a freak. And I was like, dude this guy out of here <laughs> anyway yeah she could do better this guy looked like it yeah he just didn't look good in the movie I don't know what kind of makeup they put on him to make him look like super pale with really red lips but like mm-hmm. that's kind of how he looked to me. that's how a lot of movies from this kind of time period look we were uh, a few years ago I was re-watching the princess diaries and yeah my god the makeup they put on the men it was oh my god really yeah it's makeup <laughs> because they used to do makeup for it to look good on standard like VHS tapes but now we have 4k televisions and it just you notice it right oh my god I'm gonna share this image with you or something because like this is just <laughs> just exactly what I mean god, and get on Discord. yeah go ahead it's during this bug attack that a bug lands on Miss Carmody and everybody's like oh thank god she's about to die but then the bug doesn't sting her and flies away and so now her crazy religious tangents are starting to gain some credibility and like within two days 
Yes. Um, she's created a little cult. Yes. yes. And after the attack, the next morning, a small group is like, all right, we have to go to the pharmacy and get medical supplies because this guy set himself on fire. He's dying. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also just a good idea to have medical supplies. Definitely. And I, this movie got me thinking that if something like this were to happen in real life, Walmart is probably the best place to get trapped. Oh, yeah, because it has everything. Like, you got your guns, you got your medical supplies, you got your entertainments. Clothes, food. Yeah, everything. Everything. Also, they probably fill up your, um, like... Uh, if you have like a gas grill, they can, they mm-hmm. probably have like gas or kerosene, something like that. Maybe like some type of a fuel there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, since she was pick looking like a goddamn psychopath. <laughs> and then we get one of the scariest parts of the movie where the um, military officer is like, it's all our fault. It's all our fault. And then his yep. blisters burst open and spiders start pouring out of his body <laughs> and that whole sequence is one of the scariest things yeah everything is insane from like the the crazy like uh lady having her cult from there on things just begin to fall apart and then they get a gun yeah and they manage to narrowly escape the spiders with one casualty yes um who they just leave behind because they can't really carry him back Mm -hmm. um they get back to the store and she's got her cult going and there's a random teacher lady who i don't really care about she's just kind of there yeah she is push the plot forward (laughs) and babysit billy yeah yeah that's basically what she's doing um so all that happens uh one woman killed herself uh they (laughs) the small group of them who don't want to be part of the religious cult are like all right um i'm gonna pack up some groceries and we're gonna get to your car and try and get out of here yes but when that happens uh miss carmody's like you're not going anywhere have i not proven that i am his true um follower that he's speaking through me yeah and ollie the clerk with the gun who has the only shooting experience uh kills her he just fucking kills her and he's like i killed her you know, you know, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't have to, because he's the sweetest boy. He is. He's a pretty cool dude. Yeah. Uh, they make it out of the store, and unfortunately, a few members of their group end up dying on the way, including Ollie, which is a major bummer because he's such a sweet boy. He is. And he has, like, a lot of skills, mm-hmm. <laughs> so they really lost a great, uh, you know, resource. And you know what? Um, and I'll bring it up when we actually get to the ending. So with only four members of their group left, an old former school teacher, the old man from the beginning, Mm -hmm. David, the teacher and the son, they drive back to their house to get his wife because for some reason he has it in his head that his wife is still alive. (laughs) Yeah, goddamn lunatic. She's dead. She was the first to go. He He loved her. Even if she saw the mist, knew what was in it, got inside the fucking window is broken it's already broken so just like you're fucked unless you go to the neighbor's house yeah but like it's probably locked (laughs) and yeah their neighbors are the nortons and david apparently committed a hate crime against mr norton so (laughs) yeah so they definitely have a door locked uh absolutely (laughs) um so they see that he's she's dead and they're like oh we're so sorry it's like but it's like how, you, you should have seen it coming bro yeah for sure for sure uh they just they continue driving then see the devastation of what's happened mm-hmm. um and this is one of the hallmarks that this is an early 2004 movie the fucking music they have playing throughout this entire sequence oh god it's like uh it's how, how would you describe this music um like bella's lullaby music? yeah bella's <laughs> lullaby from twilight yeah, but like with like major vocalization. Yeah. Um, uh, that's super loud. <laughs> yes. So that's a major hallmark of this era of horror movies, I feel. And it's just a little cheesy. Yeah, but it, it, it forces you to become distressed. Like when you hear it, you know something's wrong. You're like, oh, fuck. Yes. When am I going to see something fucked up? And then you do see it. <laughs> oh. um, 
God. and they just keep going until they run out of gas and um within 15 minutes of running out of gas uh they all say all right um there's full bull four bullets in this gun <laughs> that's why i'm laughing because they just don't even waste any fucking time no time <laughs> no time at all they don't even so wait the decision is made and right as billy's waking up from his little nap because he just slept through all of this i know i wanted i was about to say sam can i please make a note for the listeners that the little boy slept through through the whole thing yeah <laughs> through the whole fucking car ride and he wakes up just as his dad loads the four <laughs> bullets in gun in his face and kills his son his kills the teacher off. kills the two people in the back seat and he cries gets out of the car ready to <laughs> sacrifice himself to the monsters but then here comes the military Ugh. and the day is saved and i'm gonna fucking say it right now had yeah. ollie not died and was in the car with them they would, would also still be wait. alive. Yeah, they would yeah. also be like, he'd be like, I would be like, okay, well, I think we should just wait a while and see if anyone comes to rescue us or one of us should he, go out and look around. Like the type of character that Ollie is written to be, yes. he's a let's talk it out kind of guy. There has to be another option. And yes. we know from the novella, um, yeah. the original ending, they don't just give up when they run out of gas. They decide, okay, we're going to stop at this gas station, siphon some gas, mm-hmm. and just keep going until we reach Hartford, which is what he heard on the radio. Right. So had Ollie lived, they would have talked it out for like another 10 minutes. And, and then they would have noticed yeah. that they're com- the men are coming to save that, them. That the mist is clearing up and the men are coming to save them. God. But this ending is <sighs> one of my favorite horror movie endings just Uh, because it is so tragic it's in i did not at all see this coming from like because you go from the beginning with like the silly cgi with like the tentacle monster Mm -hmm. to this and uh it's like wow (laughs) it took me by surprise and we see the woman who left the store earlier drive by on a military convoy rescued with her two children like how the fuck there's no way she would have really survived but like yeah for the movie i mean who knows maybe because she was quiet and minded her own business the monsters left her alone but yeah maybe or maybe because she was so annoying they were just like oh i don't want to like deal with you (laughs) she's like what monster is gonna come get this lady you you and they're all just like nah not me and yeah probably left her alone exactly definitely so she lived to see another day but this fucking dude just moved too fast (laughs) on his end of life plans Mm -hmm. (laughs) unbelievable i I think this is one of the better stephen king adaptations especially for this time period and yeah it's really good (laughs) and it's a rare it's a rare achievement when stephen king actually likes one of his film adaptations so yeah yeah that's one thing um, steven and i steve and i have in common mm-hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely so um it's a good story i enjoy it um moving on to production like we've said the cgi in this movie hasn't aged well at all um and then you have the hallmark of the cheesy music towards the end of the movie yeah, I and I want to note that like one of my favorite two thousands movies, Ghost Ship, has the same music that'll come on. It's like a woman vocalizing loudly when like some yes. crazy shit happens, but it happens multiple times in the movie. But this one, it happened like the whole end, yes, like, fifteen minutes of it, which is still very jarring. But you're right, it happens. <laughs> it's cool. They, uh, like people lost their shit for that stuff in the it was 2000s. a cool thing. <laughs> At that time, it was okay. Um, but yeah, that was cool um, production. Oh, did you notice something else that kept happening in this movie? And I don't know if it is also like a 2000s movie stable, but it's uh, it's whenever there's like a little, it's like in between big uh, like conversations between characters. And it's like a scene where the conversations are happening, but they're very muted, but that you can kind of hear what the characters are saying, but the camera's right in their face, but you can't mm-hmm. hear what they're saying. It happened like at least three times. I think that's just- um, They just choose to do that. Not great audio mixing. <laughs> One thing I will note about the production is of this movie and something I like is it does feel very indie. 
in the mm-hmm. way the shaky cam. Um, yeah, it does. So I, I really like that aspect of it. And I think that kind of low sound quality or um, muffled sound kind of, it's supposed to be realistic, I feel. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Very real. So I don't know if it's necessarily a hallmark of this period, but it's mm-hmm. definitely a hallmark of these shaky cam naturalistic type um, cinematography choices. Yeah, definitely. Because it, it was a very realistic thing because it was like trying to showcase how everybody was like having their own conversations together about, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Um, cool. So what else about production other than the vocalization and CGI? What else we got? Um, Nothing too crazy with yeah. like the coloring or like the, the you know, the other nothing looked very strikingly beautiful or ugly it was just right in the middle yeah very very realistic it's all in the middle um there's not really a soundtrack to mention because there isn't yeah yeah this isn't that type of movie I think they really leaned into not found footage but the in-between of found footage and um, high production quality Mm -hmm. definitely um what else well there were the, the practical effects I guess we can talk about that a little bit I did like the practical effects there were yeah. a couple that stood out to me the body being dragged back with the intestines hanging out that looked really good yeah um, and has aged really well and then we did get one tentacle that was a practical effect yeah also like the burned guy he looked pretty burned, good too his makeup was very well done yeah And I think just the cobweb stuff in the pharmacy, that was practical. And that looked, that's, that's the creepiest scene of the movie. And while the spiders themselves are CGI, Mm -hmm. everything around them isn't and looks fantastic. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's, I I don't know what else. I I think that wraps it up for production. There's not too much else because it's just like, like it's not a big budget movie. Yeah, it's not, but it's just it's it's almost like it's one continuous take because it's like from start to finish we're seeing what's happening like almost in real time yes Um, and because of that it doesn't feel like a two-hour movie you're right yeah like we're not wasting a bunch of time oh we need to go to the library and have a montage of us researching this ghost problem oh god (laughs) i'm glad that didn't happen (laughs) cool Got. plot production performance do we go through do we talk about performance we did talk about performance uh, yeah everyone did pretty good yeah <laughs> it's an ensemble cast we talked about uh marcia gay harden yeah she was phenomenal um captain holt was phenomenal um, was there something that you said you wanted to bring up when we talked about like the ending scene or did you already just, bring up your point? I brought just the fact that Ollie, if Ollie yes. wasn't eaten by the giant praying mantis, yes, um, <laughs> he would have been the one to say, hey, let's, let's talk about this for a few minutes before we immediately jump to suicide. Yeah. And that, that scene really was very jarring because it, it unfolds in a way that like, they run out of gas. They sit there for like about a minute. And then the dude gets the gun out and he looks at the man behind him. And they're both like, the other guy nods like, yes, please kill us now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, why did they want to wait? Like, Jesus, just wait a little bit. Wouldn't you want to just like wait for a day? Like talk it out. God, but they didn't even say word. Talk out the other options. Like, well, are we close to a gas station? Could we go siphon gas? Could we go get food because we didn't have our groceries we left the store in a bit of a hurry yep nope they were just ready for end times and wanted to die then Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i do wonder what the message of it all is because the people who tried to make an escape all died but you know with this ending that the people in the store who stayed in the store with the exception of miss carmendy yeah they they're they're fine they're gonna be saved they are if they're not already saved Mm -hmm. so it's just what what's that message supposed to be at the end exactly like yeah if you try to escape 
you might get too paranoid and anxious and want to die. Like, I, don't know. I don't know. It's it's a very dark ending. And dark, yeah. I think we're currently in a phase of horror where we do, where torture porn is kind of back in style, like slashers are yeah. regaining their popularity. Like we're actually excited for them again. Yeah, definitely. But there's still an optimistic ending to them. Yeah, there is. Like yes. we're back to the final girl era where there is a survivor and she might be traumatized, but she got through it and she's stronger because of it. Yes, absolutely. But this one, they were trying to like be stronger and like survive, mm-hmm. but they quickly decided to die. Maybe it's because they saw that really big, scary, big monster. Mm-hmm. It was like an enormous elephant skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. And they got so scared that they just <laughs> died. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But uh Did yeah. they just give the kid a fucking Benadryl? Is that why he slept through I everything? No, I have no fucking idea why he slept so so much. Because he got there, he was crying, and then he basically slept the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And then everyone was screaming and there was gunshots in the store and he like was asleep. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with him. Maybe they did give him something, who knows? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> realistic aspects. Um, Fucking re- killing re- everybody. <laughs> yeah, religious fanatics in times like these of confusion and trouble. <laughs> like, this is when the religious fanatics really try to fucking take over. They do, but then, like, you can always shoot them. Yep. <laughs> and nobody will bother you if you shoot them because they're just actually annoying and crazy and won't mm-hmm. let you leave. Um, bee stings are very scary, especially if you're allergic, like this young lady was. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're allergic in real life, you could die. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, how is your tongue, Sam? I, I have knock on wood. Yes. I've made it through this whole month without another swelling. Did you figure out what it was that was causing it? No, but before bed, I take one Bella, one Benadryl and one melatonin. Okay, so maybe excellent. that's been helping. That's good. All right, but anyway, um, what else? I guess tentacle monsters aren't really too realistic. Um, but I guess jumping the gun <laughs> is uh, very bad. It <laughs> is very bad. Realistic. Yeah. Don't just go and kill everybody around you and your child, but let yourself live with get- survivor's guilt on purpose when you can just wait for a moment. (laughs) Yeah, think of your other options. There are always other options to discuss. Yeah, so I suppose not being like a, like a realistic skeptic, you know, that can be like a bad thing if you don't have like a little bit of like skepticism, a little bit of like thinking realistically, you know, being practical. that can really come in handy whenever you've been stripped away of nothing but like your survival instincts. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> there's always, it's, it's never black and white when it comes to, you know, trying to survive or, you know, find a way out. It's not just live or die. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's the movie Saw, because that is really is live or die at that time. But in this movie, it's not. <laughs> mm-hmm many other things uh i can't think of anything else yeah. realistic. I think, realistic yeah i don't know i think that's all i have i would give this movie a oh yeah that fucked me up this movie oh. in my opinion is a classic at this point oh god this movie really fucked me up like whoa i can't stop thinking about it because i was like so taken aback because i i gotta be honest in the beginning half of the movie i wasn't like I was paying attention, but like I was scrolling on my phone a little bit too. And I was like, oh yeah, I see there's tentacle monsters. So it's very silly. But then I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. It's quickly turning for the worst here. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. Damn. Classic. Right. I love it. I like it. A plus. A plus. Gosh. Whew. So <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about, do we have any news or updates regarding the originals uh i will check with david um we will definitely be acquiring those this week if he hasn't already oh cool yeah our long lost show yeah and then i will share those with you 
Oh, so cool. Yeah. So uh, don't worry, everybody, if you're waiting on the originals, we're not we're not finished yet. We're just taking a break because unlike the people in the movie, we're waiting and not killing ourselves because Netflix took it off. Exactly. God. <laughs> That's literally what they did. They're like, uh-oh, the originals was taken down. Should I wait or kill myself? <laughs> okay. Um, Sam, is there anything more we should discuss or mention before I read the outro notes? Uh, not right now. I think this was wonderful. I'm so glad that when you went on Netflix, The Mist popped up and you're like, oh, should we watch The Mist? Let's watch The Mist. I was like, yeah, let's watch The Fucking Mist. <laughs> God. God, this movie's crazy. Okay. All right. So if you haven't seen The Mist, check it out, you guys. I'm glad I did. Hey guys, so Real Horror Show was created by Sam Odie and Stormy Skies and is directed by Sam Odie. Oh my god, finally I could do a quote on what we've learned during our discussion. What have we learned, people? Just fucking talk it out. Please don't kill your, not yourself, but like please don't kill everybody around you and not yourself, you know, after your car runs out of gas. Okay, just please just take some time. Take days if you have to, but like seriously. Yeah. <laughs> just throw the gun, I don't know, use the gun to protect yourself, not to like take your life. Oh my goodness, just please just, just take a minute. Just take a beat, I think is what we learned. Okay, excellent. Very good lesson though. <sighs> Like what you hear? You can find Real Horror Show on Spotify, TuneIn, Google Play Store, Stitcher, iTunes, and Pandora. Really, really like what you hear? You can follow us on Twitter at Horror Show Pod or search for Real Horror Show on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook at Real Horror Show. Like our page and share our stuff. We also have a website that all of our written reviews and podcasts can be found, realhorrorshow.com. Want to interact with us? Want to make sure we're real humans and not space vampires? Comment on our website or email us at realhorrorshowpodcast at gmail.com. Want to argue with us about something? Or think you have a really great horror movie review that you're dying to share with two random strangers from the internet? Submissions are open for movie reviews. Check out the submit page on our website and follow the rubric before sending us anything. If it's not done according to the rubric, it will be disregarded. Sorry, not sorry. We love horror, and if you're listening, you do too. Please help us keep our project going by visiting our support page on our website, where you can make a one-time donation via PayPal. We also have an Amazon wish list. If you feel like buying us something tangible will help convey your love more than a monetary donation would. Also, you can find the buy us a coffee button on our website. It's a button you can click that will pay us the amount you would need to buy a coffee. A little bit goes a long way. Sometimes we can't help out artists monetarily and that's okay. By simply liking, sharing, retweeting, and even giving us an awesome review will help us out tremendously. Whew, and is there any other pertinent news that we didn't already discuss? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, we, we gave a really good recap at the beginning of the episode. All right, cool. Yeah. Stay warm out there, people. I mean, cool. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> warm is the opposite of what we want right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, let's just forget that that happened. Um, our after song is called Creepy Doll by Jonathan Colton. Thank you, fuck off, and have a swell evening. This is Real Horror Issues signing off. Bye. Bye-bye. I love the creepy doll that always follows